everybody, it's me Margaret and I'm here today with a question. What are your favorite non-essential yarn accessories? Um, of course, you know, if you knit, you got to have knitting needles. If you got a crochet, you have to have crochet hooks. And of course, you have your favorites, but I consider those essential, right? You can't do the, the project without those tools. But there are extras out there, of course, like my Addy Express knitting machines. Yeah, I mean, I love those. But let's get down to basics like this. This is a clover pom-pom maker. And I have four of them, <laughs> four little different sizes. These are the basic sizes. Um, they come in sets of two, the two larger ones and the two smaller ones. There's also a gigantic one. I don't have it, but I've seen it. Um, Z, did you get that in your package from Chi Chi? I can't remember if you got the giant one. But there are, it's really neat. And the best part about it to me is I get consistent pom-poms. It's very simple to use. You, you have these two pieces like this, okay? And you wrap your yarn around this side, as full as you can get it, till it's level with the top. And then you close it. And then you carry your yarn over here and you wrap it around here as full as it can get, completely level right here. And then you close it. Then you cut right up through here and right up through here. And then you take a long piece of yarn. Now I like to put my yarn, I like my yarn 12 inches or more. Um, for this and it slips it slips right into this groove the same groove that you use for your cutting guides and you pull it really tight and tie knots okay so that's the gather in the middle that's going to make the pom-pom then because you have the long ends you can use those to sew onto the top of your hat or whatever your project is that you that you're making all right so after you get it tied really tight you know that all the, the little pieces the cut pieces are gathered together it just pulls apart and your pom-pom is free. Isn't that neat? And you can get consistent sizes, which I think is neat. So that means if you're going to do uh, one for, you know, each end of a pom-pom say, you want them to be exactly the same. So, And it does take a little trim up around the edges, but just a little bit. Whereas when I tried to make pom-poms before, wrapping it around, you know, cardboard or whatever, I don't know if I'm just uncoordinated or just not basically a craft person to tell you the truth. But I would get them all uneven and then you'd have to cut it down to make them even and it wasn't the size that I had intended to begin with. So this solves the problem for me. Love these things. Now my other favorite accessory is this thing right here. It's a ball winder. I keep it on this shelf attached right here all the time because I use it on a regular basis. This particular model was only $20 from Knit Picks and it's the best $20 I've ever spent. I used to run, wind my balls by hand and while that works just fine, this is extremely fast and it actually um, <clears throat> makes a very consistent uh, cake of yarn and I like the fact that they're shaped in cakes like this because they sit flat and they don't roll all around, <laughs> which is pretty handy dandy. I always put my yarn labels in the center so I can pull it out and see you know, what it is. Once they get smaller though, I usually, like this one still has the label in it, but once I start wearing them down, uh, I don't bother to keep the label. Uh, it just becomes more cumbersome and bulky you know, because it's a smaller thing and the label's still big. And all. So I just usually toss it. So I have this partial skein of Vanna's Choice that I need to cake. I mean, it's fine. It's really not falling apart. And, I, you know, if I was still working on a project, I probably wouldn't bother doing it. But since my project with this is finished, I'm going to cake it. So here's the way I do it. I find the end and I drop it on the ground. And you need to put it through this yarn guide. See if you can see better. Alright, so we start with the yarn guide. Now, of course, you could just thread it through like that, but it's made in such a way that you can just loop it around twice, and it's through. You want to see that again? 
you loop it around twice. And there it is. Pretty handy dandy, huh? Okay, so the next step is you put it onto the ball winder. And the way that I do it is I always look to see which end is dipping the lowest uh, when it's facing the back. See the slits right here? It fits through. You just snap it on in there. But, yeah, this is the right way. You see how that's a little bit lower than that? Okay, so that's the way I started. I want this end closest. This to be the beginning end and that's to be the extra end. Then I hold it right here for tension's sake and just bend. And you can go really fast. You can go as fast as you want to uh, as long as your yarn is feeding smoothly. Here I am coming up on the end so I'll slow down a little bit. Grab it here and then I always keep these crochet hooks handy right over here because th these are my boy B-O-Y-E brand. I don't really care to work with these but they're wonderful to have handy for different reasons. And basically, how do I show you this? Basically you stick it in there kind of like you're going to do a crochet hook and I pull it through and that's how I hook it. Okay, so to take it off I have my my handle, I mean my label here, I find where the name of it is, which in this case it's called Kelly Green, right there at the top. Is it focusing? And then I'll leave that on the outside and roll it up. So now at a quick glance without removing it from the center I can see what the name of it is. Okay, I take this edge, this will be the pull, we're at the center pull where I'll work from. I put this right here in the center and just pull it up. And then you have your cake of yarn with your label. Best $20 I ever spent. And here's my other indispensable tool. This is an old makeup brush. Uh, I don't know where I got it, but it's scratchy and I hate it. But it's really full and it's, it feels soft like this to the touch, but you put it on your face and it's real scratchy, so I never liked it. But when you're working with yarn and fibers and in things like this, you get lots of dusty fiber stuff. And so I just use this to kind of dust it off very quickly. 